Hi, Brian. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't waiting too long to get into the room, were you? No, I just like, I showed up like 20 seconds ago. Oh, perfect, good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I will make you a co-host. Cool. Is there anything I need to know about your presentation in terms of are we doing breakout groups or no? <laughs> I'm gonna like I'm going to in the chat say hey if you want to follow along here's a link. If not, feel free to sit there and learn by RO and like let me know when you have questions. Okay. Um, how have they been? Uh, the question a question I do have though is how is it? How have those sessions gone? So far, what's been the format? I don't want to break what you guys are doing because I haven't been involved in the rest of this conference. Oh, um, it's it's been kind of varied. So some people actually did a pre-recorded session oh. with their presentation, mm. um, and then just had a, a live discussion. Um, but I think that this will be better because I have we don't know what level. Yeah. People Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, and then I can share the link with you real quick so you can kind of see what my plan is. Okay. Um, I'm pretty good at running audibles, so let me know if this doesn't work. Uh, let me see here. It's really simple, nothing too crazy. Uh, there we go. Hopefully that link works. It's in the chat. Oh, and by the way, I realize I didn't email you the results of the first workshop. Um, Two signed up, two showed up. So. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad, it, I'm glad they all showed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I promoted the one next week. Uh, uh, I, I promoted the one next week a bit. Hopefully, um, we'll get some more from that. But it's good test run. I, I appreciated it, and they were cool. So. Yeah. Do you um, do you have social media stuff you would want to send me that I could have the library put up on our social media to? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I can, um, I have some copy kind of pre-made that I can share for sure. Okay, yeah, please email it to me. I wanna try to get more people to participate in those. Cool. Awesome, but that's kind of the run of it. Hello, Dana. <laughs> but super loose, you've been in a workshop with me before. I don't plan on it being a whole lot different. I like questions. Um, are you stepping out? Or are you gonna hang? Are you gonna hang around? Oh, I'll be here. Yeah, and I'll um, I'll introduce the session and cool. you, and then uh, you can take over from there. Awesome. And um, I'll try and pay attention to chat if I miss anything that seems important. Feel free to step on me and let me know. Okay, I will. Cool. Cool. How are you doing otherwise? How are you? Oh, um, you know, pretty good. Pretty good. I um, it's cooled off a little bit, which is really nice. But um, about two weeks ago, I decided that you know it's it's important to just get outside at least like like I I get outside regularly, but like once a day, like scheduled, go outside, like take a walk, just breathe air that's not your house air for a little bit, or it's not an indoor place air for a little. It's been good. I've enjoyed it. So, yeah. And starting to cool off this morning was beautiful. So oh my nice. gosh. <laughs> Yesterday and today, I feel like euphoric because mm -hmm. of the weather. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think the sun was actually melting my brain before. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Is this your first summer here? Mm, it's my first full summer. We moved here uh -huh. last August. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this was particularly brutal. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I got a standing desk, which is pretty cool. So that's exciting. Let's see. So it's lifting. Oh, I see. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Maybe like that's how I'll end the session. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. The escalator trick. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so that was neat. Um, I, I built that night before last. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Um, buttons and stuff, but maybe that's how I'll end the session. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's been cool. And um, I have one at when I was in the office and I really liked it. 
uh, just a, I don't know. And it's like, it's like almost six feet long. So I just have like lots of runway to kind of do stuff That's nice. on it, which is nice. And I definitely, when I work, I tend to spread out. Mm -hmm. So it's nice just to be able to write on stuff. And cause I had a, I had a smaller desk that didn't let me do that. So it's just nice. Yeah. Yeah. I've been mostly working. Our Arizona room is also my office. And ah. I've been mostly working in our dining room because we've been like kind of redoing our Arizona room. And nice. um, and I, we also got a puppy and the puppy kind of Aww. stays in the Arizona room. Uh -huh. And sometimes he gets too distracting for me to deal with. So, <laughs> but I, I recently moved back to my desk and it's just, it's so nice um, being in front of a big window and having more space than the dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, hey, Anthony. Hey, how's the rest of the conference gone so far? Pretty good. I think so. Yeah. Awesome. Um, it started last week and it goes through next week. So mm -hmm. we're like right in the middle of it. And I think people are seemingly getting a lot out of the sessions and right. um, and we've had some really good speakers like our keynote that opened the conference was great and yeah they're they're recorded so if you have any interest in critical librarianship which i don't know that you would but um you I'd love to see the sessions for sure yeah you can always yeah. watch them yeah i don't know that it's a i don't know that it's a targeted interest of mine Mainly because um, I'm not 100 sure on what it is, but <laughs> but but yeah, no, I'd love to, I'd love to get the list because I'm sure there's something, sure there'll be something cool to look at. Yeah, I mean, I always get something out of going to conferences that are outside of my field. Um, I I kind of love going to conferences that are outside of my field, actually. <laughs> so well, then I'll mention this in the thing, but Adobe Max is free this year if you love conferences that may be not necessarily what you do. What is it? Adobe Max. It's Adobe's oh, big Adobe creativity. Max. Yeah, it's their big creativity conference. Will you send me information about that? I will send information to our... everybody here. Yeah, I was just gonna say share it with our attendees. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Yeah, so um, it takes place late October. Totally worth it. Awesome keynotes. Um, all sessions are free and a little birdie tells me that they're geared, they're gearing it a bit towards educate, a bit more towards education than they normally do. Oh, that's awesome! So, yeah, yeah, I will definitely attend. Just add it to the Google Doc that I'll share in a minute. Let's see. Oh, it looks like a Logan shared it too. Nice. Well done, A. Logan. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. But we'll get it all in one spot. Awesome. Cool. We have like four more minutes, so we'll just let people. Oh, 100%. And then, yeah. And yeah. And I'm fine giving it a few extra minutes if that's helpful, as people, because are, are there other sessions that they're leaving? No, so none of them are back to back. There's okay. at least a half an hour between everything. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But that's not to say that they're not leaving other meetings because sure. most people are doing these uh, conference sessions between their work days and. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Nice. So folks who are already here, if you want, you can turn on your video. Um, you can also change your name by going to the um, video or your box and clicking the three little dots and renaming. So you can include your pronouns um, or change your name to whatever you would like. And yeah, we're gonna get started in probably about four or five minutes. Yeah, I think um, we do have some people from the East Coast, so it is after their work. Well, thanks for hanging out. Hopefully this will be a good wind down to your day. We're definitely trying to make the, the zine 
workshops zine component more fun than oh. yeah page that should be a good break for more I will try to uh, I'll try to maintain a level of energy um, right above like sloth territory and we should be good. <laughs> as long as you end the session how how you um, plan to, I think. Oh yeah, you thinking? Okay. I think that'll that'll just be like perfect. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, well, I'm gonna count on you to stop it then. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yep. I know what I, I know what I'm doing. It's all laid out. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready. Hey, Kai. It's so nice to see familiar names, even though I can't see your faces or see you in person. Hello. How's MIT? Good out here. It's good. How's it out there? It looks so sunny. We got rain, so. Oh, you did? We it's still raining. <laughs> oh, I'm so jealous. We have hardly <laughs> got any rain this year. I would trade that for the sun. <laughs> but not <for> fires. <laughs> That's in California right now. Yeah. Yeah. I feel for for the people in California and the Pacific Northwest that are dealing with that seen those photos it's it's looking rough out there yeah. Oof. yeah lots of red yeah the pantone color did you see that no i haven't is that the color of the year now yeah <laughs> basically the fire orange mm -hmm. or blood orange i'm not sure what it's called but it's funny mm -hmm. um it's sad and funny yeah yeah it's a little scary. Yeah. Hey, Naomi. Naomi. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi, Amanda. Yay. Jenna. So many names I recognize. And some I don't. Welcome to everybody. Have you given um, workshops at all on zine making for students? Um, on Zoom? Not on Zoom, but I am working with some folks from UNM on that, I believe. So yeah, we're, uh, I have a meeting about that next week. It's exciting. That's something I'm thinking about doing for the community I support. Oh, awesome. Well, feel free to send me an email. And yeah, Jenna said she's done a bunch. Ooh. I'll Love to chat with Jenna too at some point. Yeah. yeah. I've been trying to take my zine practice off line as much as possible. So, all right, let's um, give folks one more minute. But for those of you who just came in, feel free to rename yourself and include your pronouns if you'd like. Um, if you don't know how to do that, it's you just hover over your box, your video or your name, and then you'll get a little ellipses that you can click on and then select rename. And feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat uh, and include where you're where you're participating from. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, hi everyone, my name is Amanda Meeks. I am the operations lead at uh, the University of Arizona Libraries Catalyst Studios, and I am super excited to um, introduce our speaker today, Brian Puente. Brian is a, our Adobe expert, and he leads a lot of workshops for Catalyst, our maker and digital learning space. 
And I am just really excited and grateful that he has taken the time to share a little bit about um, Photoshop and digital collage because we're, we're working on um, not only doing some zine activities here um, at Plaps, but we're also um, encouraging folks to use this as an opportunity to um, teach their students about zine making, either virtually, as Kai was just mentioning, or um, once we return to in-person. So the this may be useful in a number of different ways. And you, if you want to participate, um, or if you don't have, Brian, they don't need Adobe today, do they? Like, um or would that be if, helpful? if they want to work along with what I'm doing, I am running inside of Photoshop, but most things I'm talking about will work in like software like GIMP and things of that nature, oh. just things might be in different spaces. So okay. um, it'll be more about, I'll be using Photoshop, but the files that we have um, that I'll provide, there are some Photoshop files, but there's a lot of other resources there too that aren't. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Brian and thank you all for being here. So, yeah, no, thanks everybody for showing up. It's so neat to see people from so many different places. This is super cool. Ohio, New York, and then Phoenix, where I spent a lot of time, and that's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and send a link in the chat here um, that will share the doc that I'm going to be working with and give you access to the resources. Uh, I give you access to resources and the sample files that I'm working with. You do not have to follow along with me here. Um, but if you want to, you can. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, and then we'll get started. All right, share screen. Cool. And then, hopefully, you guys can see all of that. Um, I will be keeping an eye on the chat, um, and let me know if I miss anything that's super important. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So. Uh, we're going to be talking basically about Photoshop and how you can use Photoshop to create parts of your um, collages and things like that for the zines you'll be creating. I'm going to run you through Photoshop real quick. This will kind of be, um, this will be a pretty fast intro since we only have an hour together, but then we'll talk about um, collages and some templates that are built into Photoshop that will make it easy, hopefully, um, for you to create collages pretty fast. And then we're going to talk about compositing. So compositing is the idea that we're going to take parts of images, cut out pieces, and then add other pieces. Um, and that can be really great if your zine is going to wind up being edited in something like InDesign. So you can create the objects you're going to be using for InDesign in Photoshop and then bring them in and then we'll talk about that. <clears throat> we'll answer questions as we go. Um, and then we'll talk about really important stuff. Like once you're done, how do you get the thing out of Photoshop or GIMP or whatever it is? Um, into a usable format in some other um, application. So hopefully that sounds like a good roadmap for everybody. If you have Photoshop or if you just want to use the pictures that I have, the sample files are there for you to download. It's a box folder. You should have access to it. If there's a green bar that asks you to sign in when you open up that box link, hit X on the top right hand side of that green bar, then the download button should present itself. Cool. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. A uh, quick question and you can answer in the chat. Um, how many of us have used Photoshop before? Hands up, thumbs up, whatever. Works for me. Okay. okay. A lot of I haves, very minimally, a little every day. Okay. Cool. Minimally, a little bit unsuccessfully. Okay. <laughs> cool. So run the gamut here. Have endeavor. That's totally cool. So um, let's see. So from here, we're going to go ahead and when you first launch Photoshop, it gives you a really nice kind of intro splash screen. And then you get something that will look like this. When you launch Photoshop here, you'll have a bunch of different options. Across the top, you'll see different, um, different basically sizes of documents you'll want to build. What you want to build depends on what you want to make. Um, but if it's going to be printed, print is nice. Um, if you're just looking to create objects and things like that. Um, picking the resolution that you know you want them at can be helpful. Um, but you'll have options over here. Let me go to print real quick. We can pick different sizes and presets. So eight and a half by 11, all of these other things. I'm not going to pick any of these because I already have some um, objects uh, kind of good to go. 
but you can come over here and change this to portrait and landscape. And there's a lot of options in here. Um, so you can go through and pick different dimensions and types and things like that. So if you know that you're working in pixels for something on web, you can do that. There's resolutions here, but there's also a web setting. Um, but the main thing I wanted to show you that's in here um, are these templates that you have access to. So everybody who uses Adobe Creative Cloud, unless your organization restricts it, um, has access to the free content inside of Adobe Stock. And that's where some of these collage options will be. So if you see something that works for you here, download it, you can bring in your own images and I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Um, but some really great kind of templates to help you get started. Everything from building collages to like putting your logo on like a coffee mug and all sorts of other things are here too. And you can pay for other stuff at uh, stock.adobe.com, but all of these are free to people who have Creative Cloud subscriptions. You can also look up templates online, whatever works for you. Cool. So I use one of these and we'll get to that in a minute. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. Now that we're here, um, we're gonna go ahead and go to the learn tab on the top right hand side. This learn tab guides you through a bunch of different really cool things that um, Photoshop can do. So you can take a tour of Photoshop, learn how to work with layers and basically it's in app learning, which is super awesome. It's something that's pretty new to Photoshop. So if you're brand new, Photoshop can guide you through and teach you how to use it. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and crack open this first one and then collapse this down. And I want to talk really quick about Photoshop's interface here. So um, on the left-hand side, you'll have your different tools that are available to you. When you hover over a tool, it gives you a little video that shows you what the tool does. Um, we're going to be going over a few tools here, not, that, not too many, um, but a lot of these tools will have other tools uh, underneath them. So for example, this um, lasso tool, if I click and hold, I'll see that I have the lasso tool, the polygon lasso tool, and then the magnetic lasso tool. Um, and basically on any of these icons over here, when you see a little, um, because, uh, because of the settings I have, it's a little white uh, triangle on the bottom right-hand side of the icon. If you press and hold, that gives you additional tools you can use. We'll be using the selection tools quite a bit today. Um, on the right hand side over here, we'll have our layers panel and these you can move and kind of resize all you want all day. Basically, Photoshop is a layer based program. That means that it works kind of top down. Think of it like stacking pieces of paper on top of each other or like um, transparencies. If you remember those back when I was like in elementary school, uh, they basically can stack on top of each other to put together an image. So I have this room on top. If I hide that, there's an astronaut right there. Hide that. And I can just kind of go down and I'm hitting this little eyeball to hide and show layers here. Cool. So to move something around on this, you'll want to make sure that you have your selection tool selected or the move tool. A uh, keyboard shortcut for that is V. Uh, that's a shortcut that I use all the time. It allows you to click and drag and move content around. Real easy. Cool. And these are different layers here. We can hide and show different ones. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom and go to the stars, I'll see that now I have these like little checkerboard pattern right here. By default, that shows transparency. So if I wanted everything in the background to be removed, I would want to make sure that I see transparency when I work with stuff. And we'll get to a little bit more of that in a minute. But that's, that's a really basic look at kind of the navigation of Photoshop. Tools are on the left, layers are on the right typically. It works top down, little eyeballs will hide and show things. We need this stuff for everything else we're going to do. So hopefully we feel okay with that. Um, any questions so far about those, about these two kind of concepts before we move on? Cool. All right. If I miss anything, let me know. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up one of the, um, pre one of those presets that I downloaded, because let's say that you really liked one of these collages and you want to work with them. Um, when you download one of the presets from Photoshop, uh, from that stock or even or another stock source, typically you're gonna wind up with something like this. So there'll be multi, uh, over here in our layers panel, we'll see that there's a collages folder. Inside of that collages folder, we'll see a bunch of different collages we can sort through. So this eyeball icon becomes really important here because all of these are different, um, basically templates that you can use. So I can hide and show to kind of show some of the different ones that we have here. 
And you'll see that if I stack them on top of each other, these lines start to show up. We don't want that. Um, so I already started one, and I think I shared it in this. I have this collage three folder right here. And you'll see it's just a bunch of different images kind of with these kind of pre-cut out patterns here. So I'm going to go ahead and just like a folder in your web, like in your um, media browser, you'll just twirl down the window to kind of see this guy here. And if you're using templates, a lot of templates will say your image here. And the reason why I talk about this is because if you don't use Photoshop a ton, you may be using templates quite a bit. And this is, and templates are a great way to kind of get in and do some pretty interesting stuff inside of Photoshop without a ton of work. So what we'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and I've already, and I can hide and show these other ones to kind of show you, I've put all these in for us, but I want to go ahead and fill in these other two. With the selection tool selected, the keyboard shortcut for that is V. We give it like an upside down arrow. Select the layer here, and then it will be highlighted in our layers panel. So if I tried to click and drag an image right now, and let me go ahead and pull that up. I have this flying things folder. And all of these pictures, by the way, were um, Creative Commons licensed from Pixabay. So um, if I just pick an image here, I'll go ahead and go with this guy. So if I try and click and drag this onto the layer, we'll see that nothing happens. When I click and drag this onto our um, board right here, it takes up the entire thing and it's on its own layer down here. So it's not what I want to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and un, uh, go ahead and hit this little buster mark to get rid of it. And then I will select that layer and then I'm going to double click on this. This will open up this separate document right here. That's called a PSB. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. Mention one tool for free images. What are some of your favorite sites for free images? Mine is Unsplash. Great question. <laughs> so um, there are lots of really cool resources um, on that document I sent you. My favorite place to find anything, to be honest, like anything that I need that is Creative Commons licensed. Um, um, let's see, Penn State has a really awesome me uh, free media library. That's my favorite. I'll put that in the chat right now. Um, it's from their Media Commons, it's where I send everybody. And that basically has all of the good ones. Um, Unsplash, Pixabay, Pexels is great, um, especially if you're looking for video pretty fast. But let me go ahead and drop this in here. Yeah. New York Public Library also has stuff. I, I assume that you guys would have a whole lot of really good ideas <laughs> for places where you can get images. So I'm going to go ahead and size this up real quick. So I'm holding down the shift and the option key that's going to be alt on Windows, and that will allow me to scale up um, without um, with, if I don't do that, then I get kind of like this uh, distortion here. So if I hold down shift, that will let me just scale the picture up kind of full size. Cool. And then I'll hit return. And I'll go back to my original image. And I'll see that nothing happened. So the reason why nothing happened um, is because you have to go to this PSB here and you have to save in order for that change to be committed because that PSB is basically a mini Photoshop file inside of that Photoshop file. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to file and then save or command S or control S on Windows, my favorite keyboard shortcut. You should be saving all the time. Always be saving. Um, so then when I hit save, I can close this and come back and then there's my bird. Make sense so far? Cool. We're going to go ahead and take on the next one and I want to show you guys a cool trick that you can do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and double click this guy right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and find the next image I want to use. I think I planned this out. I have this really cool butterfly right here. So I'm going to click and drag it, bring it over. And then whenever you bring something in initially, it forms in this blue bounding box that's called the transform um, menu. It defaults to bring it in, in the transform menu. So when I move my mouse over to one of the edges, I can rotate. Cool. And if I hold down the shift key while I rotate, that will rotate in 15 degree increments. And that's great because I want this to be at exactly 90 degrees. If I kind of just kind of do a freehand, you'll see that that number kind of moves on its, uh, it's just kind of move incrementally and you may not hit 90. I just like holding down shift to make sure. Cool. Then I'm going to grab a corner and I'm going to scale this up. Hold down the shift key. 
And by the way, um, if you ever make a mistake in any of these processes, just like any um, Word document editor, Commander Control C, Commander Control Z will undo your previous step. There's also a history panel that you can go through and look at like individual steps you did and remove individual ones, but we're not going to talk about that here. So once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark here, and then I'm going to Command S. I'm going to come back to my original document. Then I'll see, yeah, it looks pretty good, but uh, I still have some gray area left in the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna come back over to this initial one and I have a couple of options here. I can transform again. So uh, keyboard shortcut time, I'm a big fan of those. So if I select a layer, then hold down the command key on Mac, control on Windows or press T, that will go to the transform menu. So I'll go back to that initial menu that I have. And then I can scale this up by holding down shift if I wanted to. Yeah, the history panel is awesome. Um, so, and that looks okay. And I could do that, save it and be done. So, but I kind of scaled that up and I'm losing a little bit of his legs and things like that. So I'd rather do something else. I'm gonna undo here real quick. And then I'm gonna walk you guys through content aware scale. Content aware scale is awesome for if something isn't long enough, for, for if something isn't long enough to fit in your image. So a couple of steps though. So right now, if you look on this uh, bottom right hand side of this layer panel here, let me see if I can make that any bigger. Uh, let me see. That's okay. Um, so on the bottom right hand side of any image you bring in, uh, you'll see the image and then you'll see this little icon right here that makes this what's called a smart object. Smart objects are there for you to protect your pixels. The reason why that's important most times is because Photoshop is a non-destructive editor. So really what Photoshop wants to do is it wants to prevent you from doing anything that can't be undone to the image that you have. But to use content to wear scale, to, to, um, use content to wear scale we have to get rid of um, that option. So on any layer that you want to remove this on, so this, this works with anything where you're doing any content to wear stuff. Um, so, you're gonna right click on the, you're gonna come into the layer, you're gonna right click on it. And then there's this rasterize layer button. I'm gonna hit rasterize layer. That will allow me to edit the pixels. Basically it takes the um, training wheels off of this guy here. And then with that layer selected, I'm gonna go to edit. And then content aware scale. When I get content aware scale, I get this bounding box here. So check out what's gonna happen. Uh, and this works great when you have uniform things that you need to scale up or down. So um, if you took a picture of like, uh, if you took a picture of, I don't know, let's say that you really like your car. You went out and took a picture of like the car, like, like, like overlooking a mountain. You just need it to be a little bit wider so that you can put it in the frame you want. This would be great for that. And also great for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this bottom one and drag it out. And then you'll see that Photoshop using its AI engine, Adobe Sensei will build pixels for you and stretch out the parts that things you wanna stretch out without messing with your subject, which is super cool. And then when I'm done, I'll hit okay. And then <laughs> I'm glad you guys like it. It's super, it's super neat, I think so. Yeah, so content aware, yeah. And then we can dig into that a little bit more if there's extra time, because there's lots of different content aware options. But keep in mind, we're on this PSB, right? So we want to save. So we'll save and then we come back. Cool, and then there's that guy and here's this pretty basic collage we did using a template. Awesome. We feeling okay about that? Honestly, like if you just drop down like content aware scale and look that up on, on the internet, like you'll you'll get tons of tutorials on how to do it. And the um, user guide that I put in the initial link that we have is great because if you just type in content to wear, it will basically break down everything that content to wear is and how it works. Highly recommend. Awesome, cool. So we'll just kind of keep breezing through if that's okay. Awesome, so I wanna show you guys, I wanna talk a little bit about compositing because when we talk about um, 
when we talk about zines and collages and things like that, typically um, a, a traditional magazine, right? Like is a conglomeration of a bunch of different things. You're gonna be taking this thing from this guy and taking them all and assembling them in one spot. So I'm thinking of Photoshop as one of those tools you can use as a part of this assembly. So let's say that I was doing, this was my cover and I wanted to write, uh, and I wanted to like write eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my text tool, click in the center here and just write eggs. And it's really small right now. So up here at the top, I can, like any other text editor. And by the way, one really cool keyboard shortcut. Um, you can pinch and pull to zoom in if you have like a trackpad. I have a mouse that I'm working with. Um, so if you hold down the option key on Mac or Alt on Windows, you can, you can hold that and scroll to zoom in. And another one of my favorite keyboard commands is command in zero or control in zero on Windows. That will make your image um, basically hit the edges of your screen. So I can double click this text with the text tool on and then turn this up to 300 if I want it. Cool. And I'll use the selection tool. Great. So now if I select this with the selection tool, right, this is still a bit small for me. So what I can do is select it with my selection tool and then just like with any image, I can hold on the command button and press T or control on windows. And then we can scale this up. I'm gonna hold down the option key and the shift key while I do this. If I hold those both down, it will scale uniformly from the center. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'll do it without it first. So this is just holding down shift. You'll see it scales to the left, right? Or if I grab that bottom corner, it scales to the right. But if I hold down the shift key and the option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, and I drag, it will scale uniformly from the center. I like that a whole lot because like I moved this where I want it to be. I just need it to be bigger. It's a great way to accomplish this. Cool. But do whatever works for you. Um, Photoshop, in my opinion, really is kind of choose your own adventure. Like these are just the techniques. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and double click this guy here. And then yeah, so shift and option one when you're in the transform menu will allow you to scale um, from there. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this text. Cool. And then I'm going to just change this to white. There's a little swatch up here that lets you change that. Cool. So this is white. And then we can choose a different font over here in this over here. I tend to like, we're going to go super. I have a lot of fonts here, but we're going to go ahead and go just with impact because it's nice and big and easy to read. Cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this kind of over here. So uh, whenever you're designing something for, whenever you're designing anything, having an idea of what you want to do is super helpful. So I knew that I wanted this eggs to be right here, right? And my goal is to get this eggs right here to sit behind uh, this egg. So that's kind of my goal. I always kind of want to have an idea of what it is I want to do. Um, so that I can kind of reference it. Because while Photoshop is fun to come in and play with, when you're, um, in my opinion, when you're designing something, if you have at least an idea of where you want to go, it's way easier to look up, especially if you're new to it, like what tutorials do I need to get this done? Like what is it that I want to do? Um, if you just type in how to Photoshop in Google, like you're going to get a sea of things. If, you're, if you look up how to cut out an image in Photoshop on Google, way more targeted. So having an idea of what you want to do can be super helpful. All right, cool. So we'll see right here, I have a background layer, then I have eggs, right? So I'm going to go ahead and take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it. To duplicate it, a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, I'll show you two. I'm going to go ahead and select, have this layer selected. I'm going to hold down the option or alt key, then click and drag. Let's see if that works. <laughs> okay, not working there, it's all right. Uh, so. I'll show you the way to do it from here then. So I'm gonna hold down the command key or control on Windows and press J, J for duplicate. Don't ask, I don't know why. <laughs> but you'll see right here, it makes a copy. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that copy on top of this. There we go, cool. And then we'll see that I have that eggs layer, I'll hide it, there's the text, I'll hide that, there's the background layer, right? So we kind of made a sandwich with that egg, with those eggs. Now the idea is to cut out this part of that sandwich. So what we're going to do is uh, if you have a newer version of, if you have newer versions of Photoshop, they have this really cool thing called the object selection tool. You literally draw a box around what you want 
and Adobe and, and the application tries to figure out what you want and usually does a pretty good job. So you're gonna click and drag, make a box. Cool. Give it a second to think. Hopefully I haven't lost you guys. Okay. So <laughs> the reason why that happened is because I have this eggs layer selected. This little running ants mean you have a selection. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here. I'm going to undo. I'm going to select this background layer. Selections are important when you're using these tools. So, and then you'll have options. Uh, if you want to sample everything that you have, you can hit select sample all layers, but I just want this egg layer. So let me try that again. Click and drag. Cool. Did an okay job. Try one more time. Nice. Cool. So whenever you do this quick selection thing, uh, Photoshop is going to reselect every time. So you can undo and redo if you, if you want to do that. Super easy to do. Yeah, object selection is great. <laughs> um, so now what we'll do here is if I just, uh, let me go ahead and hide these layers here. So you can kind of see. So um, I'm going to do some, I'm going to do this the wrong way first. <laughs> so I have the layer selected, I'm just going to press delete. You'll see that that deletes, ever, that deletes the egg, right? Not what I wanted. So if I go to, with this layer selected, and I go to select, and I go to inverse, it's going to select everything that's not the egg. So if you make a selection and you want to remove something, and you remove the wrong stuff, you can just hit inverse and it will select everything that's not that. We'll hit delete, and then everything's gone but the egg, right? But that's still the wrong way to do this. What we're doing, uh, this is destructive editing. If we wanted to come back a year from now because we were working on this project, and they're like, yeah, we really want to reuse this for something else, you have to go back, find the original image, and then bring it back in and do this process all over again. So what we want to do instead, whenever we're compositing, we almost always want to use a mask. Masks allow you to retain the information without, um, without revealing it. So it basically just hides the stuff that um, you don't want seen so that you can always come back and edit it later. Cool. So with this selected here, I just step back a few steps, however you want to do it. Um, on the bottom right hand side of our layers panel, you'll see a bevy of little icons down here. One of them looks like a little square with a circle in it. That will add a layer mask. Once I do that, we'll see this little box show up right here. And I'm going to go ahead and if I hold down option click, I can show you what this looks like. So this is our layer mask. So white is going to reveal information. You still, if you create a layer mask, you still need to do the inverse step. No, uh, only if you want to use that del delete thing. If I wanted the opposite removed, then I would do the in, then I would uh, do the inverse. Great question. All right. So I held down the option key and clicked on the mask here. You don't need to remember all of this stuff. I'm just kind of showing you so you can kind of visit, so you can kind of see what's happening. You don't have to remember this stuff to view these things, not a big deal. I just want to kind of show you guys what is actually happening here. So white is being uh, revealed, black is being concealed here. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it takes a little bit of time to kind of get okay with it, but you'll see that pretty easily we kind of have this set up, right? Um, now these two things are linked together. So if I wanted to move this egg, all I need to do is select this layer and move it. So if I wanted maybe one sitting up in front, I could do that. I probably want to consider the shadow that's falling there too. Not something I'm going to deal with right now, but you could uh, move them together because they're linked. Um, yeah. And then last but not least here, I'm gonna go ahead and resize this, just hold down, shift, make that a little bit bigger. Cool. And this text layer is sitting below here. One other thing we can do, because there is a little bit of a shadow falling off to the right, and we're not gonna get this perfect, but I wanna show you guys how you do it. So to make this look like it maybe belongs there a little bit better, I'm gonna to go to the effects button, which is right down by the mask. I'm gonna go ahead and add a drop shadow. When I add a drop shadow, it brings up a menu here. There's a preview. I'm going to go ahead and rotate. I'm going to go ahead and increase the distance of this drop shadow so you guys can see it. Hopefully, you can see that a little bit better now. We're going to over exaggerate this. But this angle right here will allow you to change the angle of that shadow. So these are kind of falling in the same direction. 
We can increase the spread a little bit to make it softer. Lower the distance, increase the size, kind of finagle it into something where those shadows kind of fall how we want. I don't want it super exaggerated, but uh, now the light's sort of falling the same way. And uh, once you do this, the cool thing about it is if you were to do multiple drop shadows or use other things that use a light parameter, this uses what's called global light. So you set the angle once, and then for all the other project, for all the other things you're doing inside that project, it will be set the same way. Go ahead, okay. Good to go. Yeah, this effects panel is awesome. I highly recommend navigating it. And then you can even copy the effects and put them on other layers if you wanted to, which is cool. Awesome. Sweet. So, so far so good. Everybody seems to be doing okay. Will you show us how, you, how to feather the edges of the egg? Yeah, so if you wanted this feathered more, you could go in. You can enter the select and mask mode, and you'll do that by when you have a when you have an object selected. There's an option to select the mask. If you double click on this, we'll go into the select the mask section. And then you'll see that everything kind of has a red tinge to it. That red tinge basically is just showing you what's being hidden. And then there's a feather option right here, so we can go through and feather this, and that's going to soften up the edges a little bit, and that can make things feel a little bit more believable. And you'll see that it has a little bit of a fuzzy right there if we zoom in really tight, but looks pretty good. Yeah, so that select a mask can either be done when you make the selection that will be up here at the top or you can double click on the mask to do that. Cool. So far so good. Hopefully we're doing okay. I think we did that in five minutes, which I think is a record. <laughs> cool. If you guys have questions, like feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I will do my best not to miss them. Um, Awesome. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, there's lots of different ways to collage. And basically when we're talking about that type of stuff, I just want to give you guys options. Um, so talked about literally using a document that has things sectioned out for us. We talked about kind of compositing our own things together. And now we're going to talk about blending modes because blending modes um, are a really great way to uh, make two images kind of meld into each other. I'm going to grab a quick sip of water though. So Pardon me one moment. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Awesome. All right, so I have two layers here and these were just layers that I clicked and dragged in into a document. Uh, so I have the surfer, then I have these jellyfish right here, right? So um, above our layer panel here, we'll see this opacity section. So I'm gonna go ahead and have the top layer selected. So I'm going to lower the opacity here because opacity is a great way to blend two things together. Just lower the opacity of the top layer a little bit. And then we'll see that these things kind of look like they're floating kind of in the air, encompassing this guy right here. So kind of cool. So absolutely like don't um don't underestimate the power of a, <laughs> of uh, selecting a decent opacity for something. But what I want to talk about here is blending modes. So uh, to the immediate left of the word opacity, you'll see this thing that says normal. With the layer selected, blending modes so, um, basically affect this image and how it is interpreted on everything below it. So if I just move my mouse over here, we'll see that we get some kind of crazy stuff. So there's this darkened section. And you see they'll kind of show the darker parts of the image. I'd argue that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, Linear burn, light, and then we have this light in the screen. I like that one a lot, color dodge. <laughs> cool. So you can kind of get crazy with it. This kind of looks like a uh, grunge music video. <laughs> uh, so kind of pick what I want and then um, so basically, this, this um, darkened section will highlight the darker parts of the top image. The lightened section will highlight the lighter parts. <laughs> or sci yeah, no, all of those are valid. An invasion in a sci-fi movie, yeah, maybe. Well, maybe, I don't wanna go that scary, I don't think. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this linear dodge ad here. 
And then I feel like this is a little intense. So if I want to tone it down a little bit, lower that opacity too. You can combine these things together to kind of get an effect that makes sense for you. And then if you wanted to bring like a cat and like bring them in and make it look like Godzilla coming out of here, you could use that. <laughs> Somebody like the intensity. Well, let's meet in the middle. There we go. Cool. So blending modes are super cool. You can stack them on top of multiple layers. Uh, you could mask out something and then do blending modes on top of it. So everything I talked about already can stack here. So we could, um, so we could do that too. Cool. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it jumped off the table though. All right. Cool. So let me go ahead and. I'll talk really quick because we talked about. Okay. Good times. All right, so we talked about masks, right? And we talked about how to use um, selections for masks. But I also want to talk a bit about brushes because Photoshop relies pretty heavily on them for a lot of functions. So if you understand how a basic brush works, you'll understand how that basic brush works with everything else. Things that use brushes include like the healing tool for removing blemishes. Um, even some of the masking tools have that. So a lot of Photoshop revolves around brushes. So we're just gonna talk about brushes in the most basic sense and talk about how to apply them to masks. So brush tool right here, you can select, you can find the brush tool by pressing B for brush. Cool. So when you select the brush tool, you can look up here to see your options for that brush. If I click right here, I can pick different brush sizes and things like that and make that brush bigger. That little circle indicates how big it is. I'll show you a faster way to do this in a minute but you can also choose opacity and flow and things like that. So you can kind of make your brush um, strokes a little bit lighter or heavier, which can be handled, which can be useful. Um, but what we'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and brushes have colors. The colors are in these swatches right here. Um, this little button right here will set our default swatches to black and white. And then if I select a layer and paint on top of it, it's literally just painting. See, now that's turning black, which is probably not what I wanted. Um, and then to flip to the background color, you're going to press X. And that's white and black. And then again, to get back to those defaults, it's that little, um, the little swatch panel above this guy right here, above the swatches that you have. That will set the default colors. Cool. But we're not going for graffiti here today. Uh, we're going to talk about masking. So. To mask with a brush, it's super easy. Um, I'm going to select the top layer, and then I'm going to add a mask. No selections made, nothing big. Now I have a mask here, right? So this is white, which means that everything in that foreground image is visible. But I want to make some of that stuff invisible. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the, make sure I have the brush selected, make sure I have black selected. And then um, this brush. It's fine, but I'll probably want to make it a little bit bigger or smaller. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command and Zero, Control Zero on Windows to make this full screen. Um, I can zoom in later if I want. So I'm going to go ahead and with the black brush selected, I'm going to brush. And you'll see that that shows this image that's underneath it. Cool. So you kind of paint that, and that's a little small. I want to hit with a bit of a broader brush stroke here. So. With my brush here, um, I can go back up here and change the size, but keyboard shortcuts make you faster, I promise. So for those of us that have standard QWERTY keyboards, take a look at it, find the P key. To the immediate right of the P key, you'll see left bracket followed by right bracket. Left bracket will make your brush smaller. Right bracket will make your brush bigger. Big, small. <laughs> and, and just hitting it back and forth can be really fun. Uh, when I don't know what I'm going to do, sometimes I'll just open up Photoshop and just do this for a while, just have something to look at. Uh, but make that brush bigger, and I can cover more area way faster. Cool. So I'm going to brush that out. And this I can use in combination with selection tool, with the selections if I want, because they both work on a mask. You'll see right here, this is the mask I'm making. Right? Cool. So Let's say that, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this brush smaller. Let's say that I'm kind of removing stuff. Right, and I do, oops. So, real important what just happened there. 
actually. So I was painting with black because I didn't have the mask selected. I need to make sure that this mask is selected when I do this. It is pretty magical. <laughs> so as I kind of do this, right? Let's say that I make a mistake like this. I accidentally um, hid some stuff I didn't want to hide, right? Because this is a mask, black will, um, uh, so I'll, if I want to remove this content here, I'll just flip to the white brush, paint it back in. Super easy. And this is most of the reason why you use an application like Photoshop or GIMP, like this ability to control, be, control like what's high, hidden shown after you make uh, decisions. Because you, like I said, you may come back. Um, I don't know if any of you guys do client work, but I have in the past and they're like, we really like this, but could you bring that part back? Cause we needed that um, or, or what have you, or you made this look too like perfect and we want it to look a little dirtier. So just being able to kind of come back in and if they're like, we like this, but we want some of that ground back. I can come back here and literally just like, let's say that they said they wanted that grate back. I can come back over here, put in the grate. And then, and then that is maybe if I was doing this a little bit more accurately, that's more of a five minute fix and less of a like 30, 40 minute like redo, if that makes sense. So um, basically all we've talked about so far, um, you can learn more about simply by looking up masking with selections and masking with brushes. Like if I had to give you things to look up or things to look at later, that's what, that's what we did here. Masking did this and masking did this. So just two approaches and um, like most things, uh, like most good composites are a combination of multiple techniques. So you'll select some stuff, you'll mask other things. Um, so yeah, I wanna make sure you guys saw that and were aware of that. There's lots more to cover, but I um, wanna make sure that you saw those things. Cool. So um, as we kind of round the final thing here, I wanna quickly talk about um, transparency and how to bring something in, put something on top of it, and then save it out so that we know it's going to be transparent. Inside of the exercise folder that um, I have here, I have this tornpaper.png. So PNGs uh, are pixel-based, so they're pixel high by pixel width, just like a JPEG, but they support transparency. So whenever you're exporting something out and you need it to be transparent, um, especially if you've kind of removed the things that you want to remove, I would recommend using transparency. We're going to use this to kind of show you how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and open up. Uh, by the way, any image that you have, if you right click on it, and open in Photoshop, it'll open up as a Photoshop layer like this. So if you have a photo you just want to do a quick touch up to, right click it, open it in Photoshop. Windows should have similar options for you. Or, you can, or in Photoshop, you can go to File Open. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in another image here. Let's go with, haven't done this yet. So let's see, I'm going to go ahead and bring this in. Cool. There's our guy. Great. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a quick object selection. I have not done this with this image. Hopefully it works. Cool. Pretty good. Not bad. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit um, this mask button. That masks it. Super cool. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. And then I'm going to transform it. We can go to, let's see, edit, transform, edit free transform here or command T on Mac, control T on Windows. We'll give us this box, we'll scale it down, hold down the shift key, cool. And then let's see if a blending mode will make this look like it belongs there a little bit better. Give it some texture. Lots of different ways to do this, but so we can use that kind of blending mode there to make it look like it was written on the paper. That looks cool. I'll take that. 
Sweet. And then, if you guys can't tell, I'm stacking everything that I showed you. <laughs> uh, so and then I will come over here and I'm using the rectangle selection tool on this guy right here. I'm going to make sure this bottom layer is selected and I'm going to mask that. So that way, just that center piece of paper is available, right? Cool. So we could type something on top of this if we wanted to. Let's go with Adobe uh, is cool. Seven two, move it over here. I like that, but it's not edgy enough. So Command T, I'm going to rotate it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit, just to kind of let it kind of sit in there. And I could change the color. Maybe I will. But hopefully, you guys are kind of seeing that we can kind of pretty quickly build a few things here. Let me go ahead and change this color. Actually, something like that. All right, awesome. So now we've made whatever it is we're gonna make and now we wanna save it out. So um, you wanna save as you go. When you save, this saves it as a .psd file. It's Photoshop document. But what I wanna do here um, is export this. So that's gonna allow me to save as like a different file type. Um, quick export as PNG is cheating and we're not gonna do it, <laughs> but it's a quick way to export as a PNG here. Um, if you're, if, do any, uh, if any of you guys work with web developers and I do a lot, they really want compressed file sizes. Um, so going in and saving this, uh, for web, will make this a small, we'll, we'll, um, lower the file size of this as well. Um, we can talk about that in a minute. We're going to go ahead and hit export as. Okay. And we can export a multiple passes, which is super cool. So I'm going to go ahead and export this. We'll do them both. Export this is a JPEG. And we can adjust the quality and things like that right here. You do not need to mess with these if you don't want to. Um, unless, you're, unless you're working with somebody who says, I need something that's this size, that's, that's the way this is great to do. Um, we can also add multiple outputs. So this is the JPEG. I'm going to hit the plus button here. To add a new one. Okay. So. Then, so let's go ahead and do the JPEG first. All right, then we're gonna export this. Then it will ask you where you wanna save it. Super important, I need to be able to find this. So I'm going to put it inside this folder. Cool. And you can label this something that makes more sense than torn paper. <laughs> I'm glad you get some out of this workshop. So we're gonna save this, cool. So now we're gonna do it again. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to look at it first. All right, so if I go to my downloads folder, again, knowing where you put stuff is super important. As silly as that sounds, pay attention to file paths when you're saving. Like, it saves so much time. So if I pull this up, you'll notice that that background is white, right? JPEGs do not have transparency. If you have transparency in the background, it's going to show up as white. Okay, so now, once I go back to file, export, export as, then we're going to go to PNG. Select PNG here, and then you'll see that top option says transparency. So with PNGs, you have the choice of whether or not you want transparency or not. I tend to recommend having transparency on because um, it typically doesn't hurt anything um, and just makes it more usable um, for adding into different objects here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit export. Again, pay attention to my file location here. Call that torn paper PNG, sounds great. It's gonna cook. Then we're gonna go back to this folder here. And then there is our initial guy here. There's the uh, JPEG, there's the PNG, right? So that has transparency on it. And I wouldn't believe me either, so I'm gonna show you. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and grab this guy, torn paper. Right? I'm just going to click and drag this and bring it in. And it's hiding it behind layers here. So let me go ahead and move this to the top. Cool. And then we have a transparent image that we can kind of put wherever we want. 
And PNGs are pretty universal. PNGs and JPEGs. <laughs> PNGs and JPEGs do have um, are pretty universal formats, so you can use them anywhere. So we made this PNG, right? And by the way, like we have Adobe here at the university that's available to everybody. I understand that that resource isn't available to everybody everywhere. Um, applications like GIMP have very, very similar functionalities. Um, so you can seek those out too. And there's tons of, I'm sure, great tutorials for those. So you're not sunk if you don't have Photoshop and you want to do this. Um, in fact, even like applications like PowerPoint and Keynote have masking tools that will kind of get you close to this. So Awesome. Sweet. So I want to make sure that we saw that and then we can export this out if we want. If you want to trim the edges, would you export um, and then trim the... So if I wanted to kind of cut pieces off of this, I could just inside of Photoshop, just um, grab a masking tool or, um, the, or the brush and then just kind of trim them right there. Hopefully that helps answer that question, Jamie. You can do that how you can do that in any order you like. Oh, if you want, oh, if you want to get rid of the white space from the P, uh, from the JPEG, like so, let's say you were starting with it, yeah, you can bring that into Photoshop um, or whatever you want, and then use that object selection tool. If everything else is a different color and it's just like white with that image, it's not too hard to trim that out using a masking tool. Yeah, so if that's all you have, it's a great way to do it. Um, basically, general rule of thumb: the thicker the lines are, the easier that that process is going to be. If they're really thin. It can be really tough. Cool, everybody. Well, I hope that was helpful. Uh, we have about five minutes here. Um, I do want to kind of leave you with a few other places to go. Um, from here, so I shared this document with you guys. Um, I'll put it in the chat again, just so that we have it. Apparently this is recorded so you can come back and listen to me whenever you want. Um, <laughs> so here is the, I uh, just put the link in the chat for this uh, doc right here, feel free to copy it. It's not going anywhere. So if you save it, it should still be there for you. This kind of went over what we went over in our itinerary. Um, you guys asked questions as we went. So that was awesome. Um, sample files are right here. Photoshop tutorials. Um, this website is whenever anybody says, I want to learn Photoshop, this is where I send them. Um, this getting started course will basically give you all the terminology you need so that when you go to learn how to, when you want to learn how to do something and you look up a tutorial, you're going to be able to sort out really, really quickly because you have the kind of the lexicon of Photoshop. If you go through these, what's going to be efficient for you and what's not. Um, I highly recommend this getting started course. Um, if there are specific things you want to learn, I'm not much of a manual guy, but um, this user guide is great. The user guide will let you look up stuff. So we were talking about, um, we we're talking about what was it? Content aware. So you can look up content aware here, and then you can basically look through all of their stuff about content aware and learn exactly how it works, and probably find exactly what you're looking for. Um, there's a layer mask course. Then finally, Adobe Max. It's free. You should go. <laughs> Uh, October 20th through the 22nd, totally online. You can register for now uh, for free. You basically um, set up all the different sessions you want to go to. You can go to ones that you can go all day, or you can go just for like the hour with the session that you want. Uh, Adobe Max is Adobe's creativity conference. And basically, not only is there a who's who of designers, if you're a designer, you probably recognize half of these people just by their faces. I recognize Keanu Reeves, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, tons of great. Um, content here. And if you've never gone to Max before, it's the first time it's been free. It's gear, uh, they're gearing it towards educators and it's amazing. So I highly recommend. Um, if there's, if I can stick around and answer questions that we have, but I do want to respect your time. Thank you so much for being here. And then I'll take any questions that you have. Thanks everybody. Aw, thanks, Ben. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. This is great. <laughs> Brian, that was really, really helpful. Thank you so much. And thank Absolutely. you, everybody who came. If you have any other questions, 
um, feel free to uh, stick around. And I'm going to stick around in case anyone has questions about the zine um, that some folks are making for tomorrow. So um, yeah. But oh, and then la yeah, and then last bit, if I may. Um, just like anything else, like driving a car, the way you get really good at this stuff is by practicing. So if any of this was even like a little bit appealing to you and you have access to Photoshop, just try it out. Um, I'll put my email in the chat here real quick. I, I don't know if it's in the guide or it's probably in the program guide already, but um, there's my email. Like reach out if you have questions. I'll be happy to guide you in a direction. Cool. And I'll hang out too if there are other questions. Sorry, Amanda. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> Want to let everybody know it's going to be here. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's fun. Awesome. Enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. Have a good evening.